to Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, episode 149. I am Annalise. And I am Neil. And today we have a very special guest, the uh, stage and film actress and host of <laughs> Little Known Facts with Alana Levine. It's Alana Levine. Welcome. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm, I'm in your clubhouse virtually. <laughs> it's, it's like our, it's our virtual treehouse. Welcome. Yes. Yes, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so, uh, we're obviously you've heard, you've heard our show, so we're kind of all over the place yeah. and nowhere <laughs> all, all, all at the same time. So, um, I, before we get started and Dan did this too, and I appreciate it cause I actually learned it from Dan, Dan Lizette of the podcast I just, which is where I heard of you and the podcast for the first time. So I'm a little late to the show as he was. Oh. Um, really quickly, why don't you tell everybody where they can find your podcast and a little blurb about what the podcast is about. So, because as we roll on, I will totally skip that and then we'll get to the end and try to cram it in and we don't want to do that. So, no. <laughs> so, so, um, it's called little known facts with Alana Levine. You can find it on iTunes. You can also go to little known facts podcast.com. And basically it offers up, uh, what I call podcast verite which is very raw and real and unscripted conversations between me and my celebrity guests. So friends I've had on the show include Matthew Broderick and Molly Ringwald and Cynthia Nixon and John Slattery and a whole host of talented artists that you love. And we are basically just in conversation and they share and divulge things about themselves and their lives that they have not shared any place else before. I think there's something about radio and broadcasting. It's such an intimate form and it has allowed them to somehow, I almost think of my podcast booth like a confessional. Like they come <laughs> in and tell me, I say things like, listen, whatever you don't want to say, don't and, or I'll, I'll leave it out. And suddenly it's, everyone's having such a good time and mm -hmm. we realize there's no reason to be uncensored. We all want to share our stories and it's very inspirational regardless of whether you are someone pursuing the arts yourself or pursuing any dream. Uh, it's, it's um, a good crossover. I, I, what I really like about your podcast and I've been listening to a lot of them since I, I did just find it. And let me go back to, so you were on podcast digest with Dan Lizette. It was episode 124. Just, so people know, um, which was a great conversation. And so obviously then I, I went and list, started listening to your podcast. And what I really like about, and Dan mentioned this too, I'm, I'm going to sound like Dan's parrot for a second, um, <laughs> is that it's really just a conversation. It sounds like a conversation with your friends. It doesn't sound like that, that radio or sometimes that podcast morning show zoo style I'm going to, you know, I'm going to throw a ton of questions at you that people could probably go and find out on the internet anyway, and make it pretend that it's really exciting. Like, you know, ask Matthew Broderick, the question that he gets asked 5 million times by 5 million people. It really sounds like you're hanging out with your friends and talking, which is yeah. what I like, because that's what we do. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've been an actor for over 25 years. And, and I have the great fortune of having grown up acting with all these people who many of whom have become people your listeners know because they enjoy their work. So not only do I love getting to catch up with them, I'm really like a proud mother who gets to kind <laughs> of show them off to everyone. Like, no, not only is he amazing because of Mad Men, listen to how amazing he is as a person. Yeah. My only, I have two criteria for my guests. They have to have kind of, um, been impactful with their creativity and be the nicest people on the planet. Yeah. And those are the only two criteria. That's, and I think that's why they are so successful because they have those two qualities. For sure. And it totally comes across, which leads me into something else that was on my mind. When we started talking or I guess text messaging on Twitter or whatever about you being on the show, which is uh -huh. awesome. I, I So I listened obviously to a bunch of your podcasts and I got – super nervous because you are so nice and your guests are so nice and, and you, you speak so eloquently and so intelligently and you have like this whole body of work. And, and that's why I said like, I'm like, maybe you should go and listen to one of our podcasts where we have a guest because we, we are kind of goofballs. I mean, it's, it's really like if we were hanging out and had lunch is what you're going to get. And I'm like, I don't, I hope you're not like, you know, we're not going to get into this deep dive of like, so in this part, at this play, at this, it's going to be more like, so 
what did you have for dinner last night? So I felt, I'm Wait. like, I felt like oh. I was warning you. I'm like, are you he sure? He just really wants to go have lunch. And also, could you pass the salt? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> are you, are you sure you want to spend an hour with think, us? To be perfectly honest, and I, and you're, you're a flatterer. Um, <laughs> I think that the thing that felt very similar to me about my podcast and yours is how informal it is and how it really is a moment in our lives just being recorded as opposed to I'm doing this television show and my PR people have set me up on 14, you know, I'm on a junket and I'm going to tell you the same thing over and over again. I think actually our shows are really, really similar. Um, yours, yours just involve, um, you know, more energy drinks and <laughs> target. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. References that, you know, don't limit, are not limited to, you know, the arts, but I think, I think we are cut from the same cloth. I could not be prouder than being a guest on your show. <laughs> oh, that's too, too kind. Yeah. Too kind. Yeah. We, but we just talked to each other. You have yeah. like some amazing guests on and I've learned so much more about those guests than I have ever known before. I mean, um, you know, like I come from the eighties and like watching Molly Ringwald and all of those movies. And she was just, she was just here playing at the Napa. She just played a couple of weeks few, ago, a couple um, months ago here in now. town. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and, and at the time, like I had heard that she could, you know, that she was a singer and things like that. And then when I saw that she was playing here, I was like, Oh, that's right. She does that. Right. Yeah. And then, but I mean, I just like listening to your podcast and having these people on, like I've learned so much more than I ever you know, even thought I knew about them. And they're so fascinating. Yeah. And Molly talks about that. The thing that, you know, every show it is called little known facts and we try to unearth things that are not yet maybe public knowledge for certain people. But I think the fact that Molly Ringwald, who is a screen international screen star is the daughter of a blind person, which we talk a lot about on the show. Mm -hmm. So just right. imagine yeah. he's yeah. most famous for, he, he can't see it. Right. Like her parent can't see right. the work she's doing. So right there, that's kind of a fascinating thing just to ponder for a moment when your greatest success comes in a medium that, you know, one of your parents doesn't have access to. Right. But part yeah. of why she pursued that and not singing as a career early on, her father was a very successful, you know, jazz performer was that was in a way his thing and he was so successful at it so right. she sort right. of went and tried this other thing to make it her own and so now as an adult having accomplished that I think she's feeling brave enough to go out there and do her concerts and she has an incredible voice and an incredible jazz band that she works with and She's remarkable. Like she's a Renaissance person. She can kind of do everything. It's amazing. It, you have a, a really good um, ability to also make these people that for us, especially, uh, you know, like Molly Ringwald and Matthew Broderick being product of the eighties and, and these being huge stars, not yeah. only in our, in reality, but for us personally, that yeah, we love you, with them. You, right. That you make them feel like, they could be our friends too. You know how we sometimes get this disconnect with uh, real famous actors or musicians or uh, sports stars because they don't seem human anymore because you only see them do these amazing things that they do and walk down the red carpet and this and that, which isn't real life. But then listening to your podcast, you start to feel like, oh, that's right. They, they are people and they're really cool. And you have this – it's really neat because you give parts about your life and your career in in the uh, – not like a lot of interviewers or podcasters do. Like, I'm super excited to talk to you because I also get to talk about me. And that always <laughs> that always comes across in our podcast. I mean, it's just the truth. But when I listen to you, it's not that way. It's like, oh, you know, you're talking. It's a conversation. It's not like you're waiting for that next a moment where you can say, oh, that's really cool that you did that, but listen to this really cool thing I did. <laughs> and I, I, that's awesome. I mean, it's, I, I really enjoy listening to your podcast because I do feel like I'm, like what I think we like to try and create is that I'm in the room with you guys listening. Yeah. 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 My, uh, my favorite podcast <laughs> of yours. Now back to me. My, right. Yeah, right, my favorite <laughs> podcast of yours so far is the one with your husband. Yes, uh, I agree. Which, I which agree. obviously which, for us, because to us, yeah, obviously. that's what we do. Right. Although 
I, I, I really like that when you met him and he told you how many siblings he had, you tested him on that. <laughs> like, go ahead and name them all. And the fact that I can now name all of his siblings also is, um, I don't know, it's something I'm really proud of. <laughs> and, uh, there aren't that many things I would brag about, but that is something I could probably do. And I feel like, you know, speaking of like iconic shows, I I grew up with two siblings. I don't know if you guys have a lot of brothers and sisters or come from big families mm-hmm. or small families. I know we reference your parents in the show and you right. go speak to them. I mean, I get, I know there are parents involved, <laughs> right, um, right. but growing up when you would see like that tic-tac-toe board on the Brady Bunch with like, you know, the six kids, like for me, when I heard that Dominic had so many siblings, he was sort of like, do I tell someone right away early on that I have that many? Is that going <laughs> to seem strange? And I thought that was the greatest, like that was my dream. <laughs> right. Always, right. always. And I still, you know, he, we go home for all the holidays and there are just hundreds of people in <laughs> any not? room at any given time. Like right. basically they're all married and have kids and the kids, it's like, and, and I just think it's the greatest thing. I feel really lucky to have married into like this huge, hilarious Midwestern brood of people. <laughs> that was, that was great. I love that you asked him when you met and then on the podcast, he goes, do you, do you want me to mention him? And you're like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, hot but, shot. Do it again. Sexier, <laughs> right? Sexier than having someone list their siblings. Try to think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I also love you. You're the story on how you guys met and fell in love. And yeah. I guess we should say your husband is Dominic Famusa, which is a lot of people will know from Nurse Jackie, right? I mean, that yes. was and Edie Falco's husband on that show, yeah. and now he's on a show called Homeland. Yeah. With a little a, show called Homeland. A little one. Yeah. <laughs> Just that show. <laughs> uh, but the, the story is so cute. I, the, I mean, you guys working together and, and falling, your characters are falling in love and then you're actually falling in love and then you tell him to go, hey, you should, you should go back to your ex. Or he's he's going to tell the story the for off. you. I'm sorry. I just thought I, <laughs> I the first you, time Peter, I heard I want you to tell the story of how I met my husband. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I was there. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> But I was there. <gasps> I was. Hilarious. I was. I would sweep the stage. Let me tell you how excited you were about it. I know. I would sweep the stage afterwards, and then I was waiting the table when you were telling him that he should go back with his ex. I was there. Three Uno. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, have you told? Uh, because I have not listened to every episode. Have you guys told the story of how you met? We did. It's. After? Would you like to hear it? We're more than happy. I did. <laughs> My favorite. Well, the, and I know your guests, your fans want to hear too. The, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, Annalise loves to tell the first time we met. Right, That's because ahead. he doesn't remember meeting me the first time. Yeah. yeah. It's good when you make it like you tell it, honey. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's one of those funny things that, you know, like, and I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or because now we're married and now it holds like bigger weight. But, you know, the first time we met, like, I remember him, of course. And, and he doesn't remember meeting me. And I'm like, oh, son of a. <laughs> well, the, the first time we met, I, I was involved with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it was at one of our, I played music for a long time. So it was at one of our shows. And, you know, I guess it's a good thing when I'm involved with somebody, I'm kind of, I right. mean, I'm a big flirt, but I, I'm not looking <laughs> to like right. anything. I just, you know, I'm just flirtatious. Right. So, so it's, it's a good thing, I guess, ultimately. But of course, I'm horribly offended. Right. <laughs> so the second time we met, I thought was the first time we met, which was at another show, right? No, no, we met. Um, uh, I don't we, even know. Yeah, I don't see, know. Yeah, right. like that? Yeah. You weren't there. We don't worry about it. Yeah. Was I? <laughs> see, I'm going to come back in a little bit, work it out. Right. And, <laughs> right. Well, the nice thing nope. now is I can just blame it on my brain injury. I'm like, oh, no, yeah, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, we had a mutual friend who I work with. And, oh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. Alana, you were no, I, so you, but the second time again, he was performing. And you no, went no, to no. no, no, oh. no, no, <laughs> no. So, oh. um, so um, I work at this place, and there is uh, this guy who I work with, and uh, he just so happens to be in a band with Neil, and so they were happened to be like down the street at a local tap room having a beer. And so I get this text that says, hey, come on down. Me and my friend are having beers. And I live like two blocks away. And I was like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. You, know, you had I'm, just gotten back from a Comic-Con. I just had uh, worked at a comic book convention because I do that on the side as well. <laughs> Which I would imagine your son would be thrilled about. Yes. I can't 
Steven, it's, it's all I can do to keep the door locked so he's not in here kind of grilling you and like, Marvel DC and like, let's go. Right. Oh, you should <laughs> maybe, bring maybe him later, in. Right? You should bring At him the end in. Of this weekend. Okay, I might bring him in. Okay. Right. <laughs> but uh, so I was like exhausted. I was like, no, no, I just I just got back. You guys have your beers. That's cool. And he texts me. And he's like, no, 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 come down. I was like, okay, okay. So I come down there and Neil is the friend. And so I walk in and I have to say that, um, and again, I remember him instantly because I was like, oh, the singer guy, singer guy. Right. And um, but I could tell <laughs> the like, annoying, cocky singer guy. Yeah, yeah I well, remember him. And I remember him, you know, being attractive. And I and then I instantly got this like vibe from him where he was like, hey, and I, and I was just like, <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then when you know we got introduced, I. Of course, because I'm not always nice. I say, "Yeah, I know. We've met." <laughs> and, and then, and, and, and then the, we fell in love. And then the sparks right. flew <laughs> right then. Right. So, anyway. so for those, yeah. I know no, people. No. Yeah, that's it. We've been together since then. We have actually and been together been since together then. then. Yeah, <laughs> and that was uh, seven years ago now. Yeah, six maybe six. Well, we've been here for five. Oh, so six, seven. We're good at this. Yeah, we're really good. We we what we do is we actually we got tattoos of where we got married so that we'd remember at least that. So I can check on that. I, I know where we let, got my glasses so I can see. Let me refer to the evidence. Right. So yeah. I have I have so it says it's probably hard to see, but it says one love and then it's got the coordinates for where we got married on the beach in Jamaica. Right. And you yeah. can't see mine cuz I have clothes on and it's on my arm. <laughs> it's up here. So so and it's Right. right. So for those, no one else can see it either. So for the, I, and I'm sure uh, a lot of our friends and listeners are going to go back and listen. But please do tell the story about. I mean, the the not the whole, but about how you and your husband met because it's so damn cute. I love it. Please. I don't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. You know what? The short version is. Uh. Often people think that every time people are cast in romantic leads with each other, like, of course, there's some potential hookup that's going to happen. And actors have that reputation, mm -hmm. right, of like yeah. on-set yeah. romances. Um, but more often than not, the, that's not what happened. And I was cast in this play, and Dominic was cast as my love interest at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. And uh, he and I were both um, trying to figure out uh, relationships that we were both sort of dancing around with other people when we met. And I think for both of us having this job, it was a great moment for it to happen where we could go focus on work and kind of figure out what we want to do about this other stuff. But as soon as I saw Dominic the very first day in rehearsal, and for anyone who's seen him on television, obviously he's an incredibly handsome person. Hells but yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Hells the, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's like he's, hilarious and funny and all these other things. So the entire package was slightly overwhelming for me. So I do what I do when I like someone is I at first actually, and I didn't say this on my podcast, I did not speak to him. I was <laughs> loose girl because I, I was just like, I don't even know what do you say to someone who actually you're going to end up married to and you know it in the two seconds that you've met them. So I do the thing I do, which is I'm aloof and, uh, <laughs> That's, that was my starting position. And then slowly over time, as we were working together, I thought, wow, I am mad for this person. And I don't know what's going to happen with my other relationship, but I know that whoever I marry has to be just like this person. <laughs> and again, my reaction to that is I'm going to make sure he gets back together with his ex. Like that's really the only thing to do in, in when you come face to face with the reality, like, oh my God, you've just met the person you're going to be with mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. You either run toward it or run screaming from it <laughs> right? or both at the same time, because it's so real. And when you meet the person you're actually going to be with for your whole life, it doesn't feel like anything else. It is the most intense. It's almost like this. It's like a shock. Like it's like you've been shocked with like electricity for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I did everything I could to make sure that I gave him the best advice to heal and reconnect with this other person. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because I was too overwhelmed. I think I was just too overwhelmed because I also knew that when you meet the person you're going to spend your whole life with, a lot's going to change, right? Like you're yeah. no longer 
like that's it. When you were saying like I'm flirty but I'm loyal, mm-hmm. like now you're flirty or not, but you're that's it. Like this is your person yeah. forever. So you have to take a really deep breath before you dive into that. And um, I I took a a little breath, really, like <laughs> <laughs> just a little oh, one. Yeah. That's too funny. As I and then you know what? I remember, and this is so corny, but he played uh, a love interest in the play. And I remember my dad coming to see the play and he came backstage and he's like, let me meet my son-in-law being funny. Cause like in the play, it ends with the idea that these two people are going to get married. And then like a year later, there we were at my wedding and he met his son-in-law. So that was it. Wow. Just a year yeah, later. Gr- it just, That's awesome. So fast. That's awesome. So fast. The train left the station and then I was like, <laughs> not only do I want to be married to you, I want to have a child with you and then another child with you and I want to... All right, let's get this thing yeah, rolling. You're like, just... <laughs> just let's do it, people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was... And we got dog and we were done. Now we're done. It's all it, good. It was fun. Speaking about his good looks, when, when we were listening to your podcast and then, of course, I went on your IMDb page and I was looking around I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I, I know her because I'm a huge Law & Order fan. Very much so. And Very binge much so. Of all of them. It doesn't matter. It could be SVU, MIA, KBH. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fan of I all of them. KBH is the best. Right? Isn't it? <laughs> and so, um, and it was funny because Annalise goes, Well, you know who her husband is. And I didn't at the time. Well, I didn't when I first saw you, but it, I, then I'm like, oh, you know, look, she's married to... Because, again, sorry. he watches all those shows, right. and so I'm, I'm like, I'm like, you know who he is, and he's and like, I was I like, oh, hell, about. hell, after I looked, I'm like, I know who that good-looking guy is. Of course I do. <laughs> well, you know, he had done... So Cynthia Nixon, who's on the show, is an old friend of mine, yes. because my first TV series was with her, and, you know, on that show, all of those women had a million guest stars would come in and play their boyfriends on different episodes. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I got the play with Dominic, Cynthia was like, I did an episode of sex in the city with him. He, uh, he was, first of all, he kissed really well. (laughs) (laughs) Good to know. And she's like, he was an amazing actor and the nicest guy. And she was like, I re- like, not only do I remember him, I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> so I felt like that was like a great deal of approval. Nice. And you were like, hey, that's my husband to be, even though he doesn't know it or I don't know it yet. Come on now. <laughs> I haven't even been a snob to him yet on yeah. first day of school. None yeah. of that had happened. I haven't shut him <laughs> down yet to get him back in. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what I love about Law and Order is like, you can do one and then a year passes and they're like, hey, they want to see you for an ACLU lawyer. And you're like, oh, but I played a social worker last year. They're like, fine. Yeah. It's don't fine. worry about yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> so I came into the Law & Order thing a little late. So I binged like after Netflix became a thing. So and you, you noticed all that you would stuff. Get the de- yeah. Right. So I binged them. <laughs> But it was it was funny because when I got to the end of whatever series Law and Order series I was watching, I got so attached to the main characters that I missed them because all of a sudden I watched because like we're friends nine <laughs> nine you know nine years of this show in two and a half weeks that all of a sudden I was My but it, but it was funny how I'm like oh she she also plays this on that and she was this and he was that but it. Yeah. it I when I so I I binge watched SVU and when that was over I was depressed for like a couple weeks <laughs> one just, it's, or just the brutality of what happens it, in each episode it was both it was because all of a sudden I missed the 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 characters and they became my friends like you know because they would be on all the time I'd be making dinner I'd be come back from walking the dogs and it would be on and then it was just so brutal i'm like this world is so evil i am so sad and now my friends are gone they don't even call anymore <laughs> You should listen to the one Catherine Irby does one of the episodes. She was the star with Vincent. I met her because Tim Daly is an actor who played Vincent D'Onofrio's brother on the show okay. for a number right. of episodes. Right. Uh-huh. Who kind of went through a very hard time, and I played his wife, so Vincent D'Onofrio's sister-in-law. Right. And I met. I, I had known Catherine Irby a little bit through the New York theater scene, but she was on that show. And uh, we became friends, and I am a great admirer of hers. And you can feel like you're hanging out with her again when you listen to that episode on Little Known Facts. And she talks a lot about 
what it was like to be on that show for so long and, and all the changes it brought to her life, knowing that you were watching. Yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. That you was watching. Exactly. <laughs> And, yeah. and she misses you too, is what she's trying to get at. I know. Right? <laughs> you all, you all miss me. Everyone who's ever been on that show misses me. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. They're like, where? So I can tell her you're okay and that you guys are doing great. Yeah, Please, do. Yeah. Please do. Please <laughs> do. Because yeah. you know, I know everybody was worried. Which <laughs> I, this is kind of a, a, a weird transition, but it, it just popped into my head. You, so when we started talking, one of the things, or talking, whatever you want to call it, when we started conversing through digital media, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, one of the things I thought was so sweet and so nice was like, you sent me pictures of your kids and your dog. And one of the, is that pic- okay to say? <laughs> I say hope that? so. Right. <laughs> if I need to bleep <laughs> that out, let me know. Pictures of my kid. I remember sending pictures. Oh, is it, be- were they holding my dog? Yes. In the picture? Yes. Okay. And then okay. you, uh, like, you, pictures of you, also, here's my kid. You <laughs> sent me out. And I'm like, Oh, I'm keeping the dog, but yeah. please, right. you, my kid. Yeah. yeah. And and then um, you sent. I, I hope this is okay to say you you sent a picture of your son uh, wearing well, something that he made. Is that okay? To, can we talk about that? Absolutely. Okay. It's the greatest thing ever. And so, he should put them on Etsy. He, he, should. <laughs> he should. He made he his. Should. You should post a picture on your website of his amazing costume. We will. He's covered. And, we will. And, and it won't be exploitive because you just see the amazing craftsmanship. Yes. He made his own Flash costume, which is really good. Very good. It's yeah. not because, you know, because I, I told you my silly costume that I made. But this is actually like it looks like Legit. The, the Flash. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and I it was it, – but it was so neat when you sent it to me. And the, and I, I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And you're like, Annalise is going to love this. And, yeah. And I really she, was I sending it. I uh, unfortunately, I I did think I was sending it to you. <laughs> uh, I sent it to Neil. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm happy to see that you guys share your content. Oh, yes. so. for sure, for sure. Well, I, I was not a huge comic book person until we met, and Annalise is huge comic book and and the shows. So like shows like The Flash and all that, um, I probably wouldn't watch if it wasn't for Annalise. Until yeah. now, I'm into it, but. It was so cool. Then you sent you sent the video of your friends who who sent him a video. So, yes. So yeah. so through like this is the you know a lot of bad things can happen on the internet, but a lot of good things can happen too. Totally. So yes. proud mom, I post the photo of this amazing flash costume because I can't believe my ten year old made it. Um, and it's and really good. I mean, it's a it's really we'll good costume. We'll post it. We'll post it. Yeah. You guys will see it. The only time I'm sad that this isn't actually. Televised, right? right? The old, <laughs> right. That's for Caleb's um, costume. So my friend, a magnificent writer who writes for Supergirl, mm-hmm. as it turns out, um, is a Facebook friend as well. She saw the picture. She's like, "This is so crazy." I'm in Vancouver, and I'm going to see the whole Flash cast later. And I was like, "I'm my son's going to have a heart attack." Like, right. just that sentence alone would be a little too much for his small body. <laughs> But she's like, can I show – she's like, you know Jesse, right? And I was like, yeah, I do. Jesse, who's on the show, was also in Rent yes. with Anthony Rapp, who starred in the musical Rent. And then I did a show on Broadway with Rent. So we all kind of met each other because we were all doing Broadway show musicals around the same time. So I was like, oh, that's adorable. She's going to show the cast this cute little um, <laughs> costume that a friend of a fr- – like, how adorable. Like, they get a lot of stuff every day from right, fans, of I'm course. sure. Right? So – that alone, whatever. And later that night, I get a, a an int- like this video sent to me um, for Caleb, my son, with the entire cast, um, all of those cutie pies, saying, "Hey, Caleb, we just saw your costume. It's amazing. Good work. We're so proud of you. Thank you for doing it." Like, just imagine, like whoever is like. Hey Neil, it's I don't know, it's Bob Dylan. I just want to say yeah. that, oh, that I, song, that cover you did of my song is the best one I've ever heard. Like it was like that for him. Oh, like I, the Flash telling him that his costume was a maze ball. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. You, the the Flash tells you that your Flash costume is amazing. amazing. I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't Take, imagine. And maybe then, Bob Dylan isn't the right reference for you. Who would that be? For John Bon Jovi. You? Okay, if Bon Jovi was like, Neil, I just heard you crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, again, uh, but Bob Dylan would be amazing too. But for me, yeah, for me, it would be, it would be JBJ. 
right? <laughs> or Nikki Six, yeah. Uh, okay. But that, it was just so cool. The video was so cool, and it was so. I don't know. There was just, it was funny because you sent it to me and I couldn't get it to play. So I spent 20 minutes going through like 14 different platforms to try and hack this video to get it to play. I finally did. (laughs) And of course I'm thinking law and order. That's all I see is law and order. I'm like, right. Right. You were. Yeah. (laughs) So then I, I got home and showed on Elise and she was, she's like, that is, I'm like, no way. Could you imagine being a 10 year old (laughs) and you make this costume and, Okay, see if I can oh, find amazing. it and play it on yeah. air. All right, let me see if it's going to work. This might, this may or may not work, and you may lose listeners because I'm doing this, but they'll come back. Oh no, they'll, right. no. <laughs> they'll be fine. Let's see if Don't worry. It. Okay. Yo, hey Caleb. Hey Caleb. Grant and Jesse here. Jesse here. We just want to say your costume is awesome. It really is. Amazing. I can't believe you made it yourself. It's incredible. We just wanted to tell you that. That's all. Say hi, Candice. Hi. Thank you. Yo. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Lana. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah, it it's sounded perfect. great. It's perfect. It sounded great. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you have it. That's all. That's that was that was that. That's the cast of the Flash. And it's so funny, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about you being so nice. So you're sending these pictures of your kids, and here's my kid in the Flash costume, and here's this video, and I'm like, wow, she really needs to listen to a show of us with a guest because I am so inappropriate half of the time. <laughs> I don't want to upset her whatsoever, but I don't know how to be any other way. I listen to your show. I love it. My husband and I try to reenact it. <laughs> <laughs> you go to, do you go to Target a lot? Do yeah, you? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We're totally. It's great. I think it's great. I think what's particularly amazing about it, and why I'm not even kidding, Dominic and I reenact it without um, sound. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't record it. Like you guys know, no matter what, whether you have a guest or not, that every you know once a week or however often you record, you have carved out this time with each other. And whether you have one listener or 40 million listeners, you know it's a date. And I yeah. think uh, that is such an incredible thing for a relationship. And just also you guys are obviously completely charming together <laughs> and taking it on the road was a great idea. <laughs> but it really, I just think for the two of you, that must, like, I, I hope I can find something like that for, for Dominic and I, because I think it's a fantastic way to be in a relationship with someone creating something together. Yeah. I miss that. Like Dominic and I have only worked a few times together again since we met because we have kids. So we try to not well, always you did create humans together. Yeah, you, so. you did create humans together. Yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't allowed us to uh, work on stage or screen together as much right. because right. we all just want one of us to be home. So we grab at any opportunity, and and as I said on the on the podcast that we did together, that hour that I had with him, that I mean, it was fun to share it with people too, and to share him with an audience. But I felt like it's kind of romantic. Like, is it romantic for you guys? It is. It, it's, it's it's a huge connection, and it's also um, it's actually, also helped like stop or solve arguments. We because sometimes as on interesting as that is, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes on recording, you know how you know, couples are, something will happen and you start arguing about nothing that ever really matters because the things that matter, it seems like you figure out quickly because it actually matters. And you're like, Oh, this, you know, right, leak this in our roof. We have deal. to fix. We're, yeah. we're going to get through this, but like but something silly, like I, I, I'm just picking this one out of the, the air mic placement, for example. Sure. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't talk loud enough into the mic, and I'm a little sensitive about it, and so sometimes I will be a little too sensitive about it, and we'll have to have a conversation about it. Yeah. Right. But, you know, but we have to get through that conversation to get to the recording part, because we've made the state, and we keep the state. Or, or You but- know? But even sometimes it's been out of this, like not with pot. We'll be in an, some, like I said, some silly argument about something. And, you know, recording, we're supposed to record it this time, you know, it, even though it's just us. And, and then we don't, and we're sitting there and we both look at each other and it becomes this thing of like, I really miss the fact that we're not recording right now. Why are we wasting our time doing this? So it's almost like this, well, let's make up and figure out what the issue is and get in there and record. And you do that, and when you first sit down, or we first sit down, and it's still kind of like 
maybe there's this little bit of resentment or, uh, you know, you're still a little pissed off about something. But as soon as you start recording, you realize, oh, this is, this is, this is the person I love. This is why we do – not the recording, but this is why we're together. And it helps to remind weekly of, oh, yeah, this is an amazing person that I get to talk to. So it solves a lot of, of issues. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's a little peek behind the curtain. And it is. It's a set date night. Are your recording personalities different? Are the are there are there characters involved? Like, is it seamless the recording version of you guys and the um, non non podcast people? Yes, for people that have been on, have said what you hear is exactly it's, who it's, they yeah, are. It's people pretty... who have actually been with us in person yeah. and we hang out. Right? Um, yeah. They say yeah. Now, when we're home and it's just us, like I'm a little more quiet, just day to day because I'm in my head or, you know, I'm got to mow the lawn or take the dogs for a walk. So I'm not always, not everything's an innuendo and not everything is hilarious <laughs> to me, but how I talk often with, though, <laughs> yeah, how I talk with Annalise or how I, you know, make jokes about what I say to my mom or my sister is exactly who I am. And same right. with Annalise, the, the laugh you hear and the thing yeah. she says is exactly what you would get if we were – like if you and your hubby were here and we were all out to dinner, this is the same exact conversation we would have. We would still tell you about our Target shopping trip, whether yeah. you wanted to hear it or not. Right. But you like don't, <laughs> so the only difference is like you don't have the headphones on. Right. Right. And and, and we try to keep the, the podcast positive. So if right. there's something right. that's bumming us out, we're, we're not going to dwell on it on the podcast. You know, right. Like, right. like our, our, we um, had a very beloved dog pass away. And we talked about it on the podcast, and it was so amazing because we actually, and we know we like couldn't ignore that it was happening, you know. So we have to; it's a part of our lives, and it's a huge part of our lives, and it's a huge painful situation that was happening. And so we had to talk about it. And then, right. um, and amazingly, our um, podcast listeners and friends that we've made through doing this from all over the country, and even not in this country, like sent us cards yeah. and art. And yeah. just well wishes and things. And we were just like overwhelmed, just completely overwhelmed by the response of something that we weren't even sure we were going to share or should share. Or because, you know, like you don't want to listen to us to get bummed out, you know, like, yeah, we, <laughs> welcome to the show this week. Our dog is dying, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> no, but it feels like family. It's been really incredible to me as someone very new to this comparatively. Um, it's a community yeah, and it really is an amazing thing. As you just said, to see when you can like, you know, uh, someone taught me how you can see geographically where people mm -hmm. are listening yeah. mm -hmm. from and you're like, hello, Singapore. Right. Hi. Hi, Abu yes. Dhabi. Like it's yeah. wild. Yeah. It's wild. And it's a, a kind of incredible thing to, to have international friends all it's like pen pals like when you yeah. were young exactly you kind of exactly. do that it's a really neat thing well that makes perfect sense to me you guys are so warm and kind and generous and of course people would want you to know that they're thinking <laughs> about you during a hard time i get it uh, i did want to ask you with um because you're one of the only people i i got to opportunity to talk about this with with your experiences on stage and screen and now doing the podcast, what has been like the the most interesting thing or the most sh shocking, and I don't mean like in a weird sense, but just like, yeah. oh, I didn't expect that, that has come from podcasting? Is it the community has, or is it um, just the uh, you know the outpouring of wanting to listen to you, you know, talk? <laughs> well, I would say for me, and, and I don't know that this would be true for everyone, but having been um, on stage or on screen, being in uh, a room where what I look like is completely irrelevant, mm -hmm. just not having to worry about, um, and it has nothing even to do with vanity. Just part of my job is to look like the character or look a certain way or look a certain age. And I have found just such tremendous freedom when it's purely audio to not have for me personally. So I don't know that new things or shocking things have happened mm -hmm. because of, but I feel so free um, and unselfconscious in ways that are harder to come to when you're on film or on stage and people are just looking at you all the time. Right. So um, having that pressure off has been a really just lovely thing for me personally. Actors are under a lot of pressure 
about what they look like. And the internet can be incredibly vocal about it, positively Mm -hmm. or negatively. It suddenly feels like, not only are we going to talk about your work, we're also going to talk about, like, you need to get your roots done, right? Like, (laughs) right. 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 It just felt like, like Desdemona right. in that scene of Shakespeare, but it suddenly becomes <laughs> right. like people okay, say things fine. to each other on the internet that they wouldn't say to their best friends. You know, like yeah. I would never like be like, okay, so I just want to let you know that you should probably have your roots touched up. I'm not sure that would ever come out of my mouth. Or people don't even, <laughs> people don't say it even nearly as kind or as nice as they would in person. Like, oh. Oh, hey, I just wanted to let you know you have something on your face. It's more like <laughs> that blah, blah, blah didn't even notice she had blah, blah, blah on her blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And all I do, like the only thing, I mean, I would love for my kids to get great grades and I want them to be respectful of their teachers. But the only thing I care about and teach and talk about till they're like, we know, we'll be nice. <laughs> but really, like kindness, that's yeah. it. It's free. There's, you don't have to sign up for it, send a wait. Like, it's just really easy to be um, someone who leads with empathy and kindness. And so, I don't know. And I'm, as you know from my show, like, I'm all about humor. I'm, yeah. I, I live, to me, that's the most attractive quality in a person, right? Like, if you can make me laugh, you, you know, right. you could have done something horrible. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, but how hilarious were you when you told me? <laughs> right. Like that's well, hilarious. I, that's exactly right. Cause like it, it doesn't matter how attractive someone is at the end of the day, you still have to be able to hold a conversation with that person. Gravity. So like yeah, at the end of the day, you guys are alone together. So like it's, you know, yeah. are, do we have fun together? That's yeah. like a huge deal. That's- it. And I feel like that's what's so addictive about your show for me is how I hear you guys laughing at each other's jokes. And after being with someone for a long time or just taking great pleasure in each other to still like each other or be interested in what the other person has to say, that's not easy. You know, Dominic every once in a while will be like, did I ever tell you? And will be like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> like six no. times. No. Right? <laughs> I got it. You were the quarterback. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> seen, seen the uh, the beta tapes. Um, mm-hmm. but, but, but I know I really love him because I actually don't mind hearing. Right. Not always. Right. But if, if I've had enough sleep and I've eaten, I'm happy. <laughs> if I'm low blood sugar, I, I'm not interested in anything. It must, it must be interesting. And I, I mean this as a total compliment. It's, I'm going to sound oh, like a jerk. But oh, it, must, it, it must be interesting for both you and Dominic to, you know, you start your acting career when there, there hasn't been as much social media. And then all of a sudden, it's this bombardment of like, how do these people know this? Or why are they telling me about this? Um, is, was that a weird transition for for you guys or did, were you guys, it's been a very strange transition and it is something that we're not, um, Dominic is not involved at all. I mean, every once in a while he'll peek over on my Facebook page and, and literally he's like, is that, is that a thumbs up? Is that what that is? That I'm like, literally (laughs) not, no, no interest and doesn't spend time on it. And, um, and, you know, I also, it's, it's, it's a strange thing when now all things being equal between two actors auditioning for something or the one with more followers will get the job right. or sometimes sure. the person who's not even as good, but like Sony's like, yeah, but I mean, look, already we have. Yeah. 1.5 million yeah. followers. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like built in audience. Yeah. Yes. So that is, um, I mean, luckily so far for, for, for Dom, um, he's been able to continue doing what he loves to do in these wonderful shows. So it's not completely true that that's the only way sure. to kind of break through. Um, but it's, it's a little disconcerting Yeah, that followers, um, at times can have more, uh, influence than somebody's talent. Yeah. Like, Kind of disappointing. Yeah, it is, and sad. You see it sometimes in movies. It's like, how how did this person get in this movie? And it's like, oh, because they know that even if only half of their followers show up to see it on opening night, that's five hundred thousand yeah. people in this yeah. country alone. Yeah, yeah. And that's 
not to say that someone who starts out as a vlogger showing you their haul from their local mall that day isn't a talented actor. They're not mutually exclusive possibilities. Right. But more often than not, that's kind of irrelevant. Right. So it's kind of amazing when you do see a Broadway play and you're like, that girl actually is famous because she literally showed you like which mascara was her favorite mascara. Right. Um, so I don't know. It's a whole it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. And I'm glad I got into podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's fun to be part of the Wild West again. And certainly for me, I'm learning. I have no skill set. My, I, I don't know. I think I told Dan this. My 13-year-old daughter was like, when I just got on Twitter two minutes ago, she was like, Mommy, you can't have like hashtag <laughs> space work. Right. <laughs> what? Like now, obviously, if you're a native speaker or or anyone who's done it at all, tweeted or been on social media, you know there can't be a space between the word and the hashtag. But that's literally how like moron, like no idea. No, I, you know, I did not use Twitter until we started the podcast, and yeah. so I mean, and I only had a Facebook page for maybe like a year. No, I would say two years before that. So right. I was definitely a late adopter. And for good or bad, I kind of work in a highly um, technology, you know, driven field. So yeah. it's probably a good thing that I did, you know, kind of get more into it. And it's probably something I should know about. And often now at at when I'm at work, I'll have like a coworker say, you know, like my coworker has a band, for example, and he's trying to like link his Facebook and his Twitter to his like Instagram. And he's like, hey, 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 um, so how do I do this? I'm like, OK, so what you have to do is, <laughs> you know, and so now like I've learned enough to like be able to like help somebody else. But like I didn't okay. know these things like five years ago. Well, I really need your help. Right? <laughs> you could just text me like one, two, three, more right. than three steps. I'm out. Right. Like, that would be great. <laughs> right. I actually, at this point, sometimes I he just hands me his phone, and I was like, "Okay, see like, here, see here, this menu. Click this. Okay, so now it's going to shoot it to your Twitter. But it's really best if you do dual post because otherwise it just shoot. and he's like, and then like the eyes glaze over. I'm like, we'll come back to that. Well, it's fine. <laughs> menu, but I totally love. I, I know, but I, you know what, it's just who I am. It's not, it's not, I have other talents and for whatever reason, I'm not intuiting this the way I've been able to intuit other things in my life. Oh, I so, think you're doing great. I, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen your Twitter and Facebook. I've yeah, looked. You're killing it. You're, you're fine. You're, you're just fine. <laughs> and your podcast is so freaking amazing that as soon as people listen, they'll be like, oh yeah. Yeah. I'm in. And people She's got just it. like to talk to you. I mean, I think that's a cool – that's what that's for. It's like so people who listen to you and like what you're doing, they want to be able to tell you. And that is an incredible tool and amazing thing that people do. I think that that's – I don't know. I think it's really cool. I have a question for you. Uh -oh. uh, so, <laughs> so we're not going to keep you all night, obviously. We're yeah. running into our favorite five time. We can go ahead and go into the favorite five, or okay. we can just spend a few more minutes and just talk about stuff. So I, I want to leave it up to you. Um, well, I, I, uh, I did my homework. I okay. did some thinking because I knew this was coming. All right. right? <laughs> then let's of, do it. There are a lot of things that you can have favorites of. Oh, like it's – ridiculous how many oh, yeah. possibilities there are. That's yeah. why our favorite fives can be ridiculous sometimes yeah. because like sometimes they're more important than other times. But, but we've done like sounds, smells, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I did think, I did think that I did want to share something. One of the things that is, you know, a little known fact about me and why when I was in a Broadway musical, my head almost exploded because I have been a fan of musicals my whole life. My mom would play cast albums at home, and it really was the soundtrack to my childhood, along with, you know, having older siblings who would play their rock albums for me. <laughs> I love show tunes. I love show tunes so much. So I did, obviously, a lot of people no matter where you live, have heard of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And that's become a big crossover musical where even if you weren't a musical theater geek like me, you're suddenly, you might have heard of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. But can I share like some of my all-time favorite musicals so that if your listeners want to 
dip their toe into the waters of musical theater albums like they might listen to these. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's that's a blast. Let's no, we should do the Fair Five because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yes. So, but let's do it a little different. Okay. Let's okay. have Alana. Let's have Alana do her favorite five. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about those. And if we want to mention ours during, because we haven't been to a lot of Broadway musicals, so we kind of augmented our list. But I, I think, I right. think, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just, we'll have fun with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then so, we'll, how do you want to, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? So usually what, what we'll do is we'll go first so you can go last. So you can have the last number one. That sounds so, great. All right. <laughs> so, so you can I'll be go, number one. Right. <laughs> I'll go, awesome. I'll go first. So my, my fifth favorite. Um, which is hard to tell. And I, and so this, I actually didn't see on stage, but I saw, I believe I saw it on, uh, there's so PB- many, so there's so like a- PBS. <laughs> yeah. I saw it on PB or K- out, out here. It's KQED. It was, it was the public radio station. Oh my gosh. There's so much. Cause I wanted to tell talk about the women's March day, but anyway, we'll have to talk about that later. So some I other day. Tell you, you do your top five. The idea that on the day that I just went to the million women's March yeah. and I to talk to you in the same day that I went there with my daughter and my sisters and their daughters and friends, and I get to talk to you in the same day has made this one of the most fantastic days of my life. You are much too kind. Way too nice. Way too kind. I saw a picture of you that you uh, tweeted out with your daughter. See, you're doing just fine with the social media. Yeah. Yeah. And you thought that's great. It's amazing. So, uh, but it was awesome. Very powerful. And thank you for being there. That is awesome. Yeah. So I thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much. So anyway, so my number five, uh, which I saw on, on our local uh, public broadcasting, uh, was Cats. I really enjoyed okay. Cats. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen it. Yeah, wow. I enjoyed the heck out of it, which I didn't think I would. Because the first I ever saw. Really? Yeah. Nice. And it's getting um, rebooted, right? They're going to yeah. do a new one. Revived on Broadway, and yeah. I imagine they'll do a national tour, and it will come to Northern California. I'm sure it'll be where, in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. The closest uh-huh. place we can see a play is in San Francisco. Yeah. So, how how far a drive is that for you? Just by the way, uh, without yeah. traffic, it's about fifty to fifty five minutes. I, I make it every day because that's where I work. So, right. yeah, it's not bad at all. It's more of an event I'm, on a Saturday night, though. When you know, it's uh, it's, yeah. it, it's it's a bit. I would say it's New York ish, where it's a. It's an event, you know, like we go into town, we pay $25 for parking, you know, yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. it's a thing. So we don't go often. It's New York-ish without the awesomeness of New York. I did a play at the American Conservatory Theater in San oh, Francisco. Oh, nice. pre-Broadway run and... Uh, I love San Francisco so much. You're so well. You're you're so welcome. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are welcome too. <laughs> you're so welcome there anytime. Right. Well, right. anytime you guys okay. want to come out and visit, you have a, a cute little place to stay in Napa Valley. So and they like dogs. So yeah, right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What's your number? Um, so I have the same preferences. I've only been to a couple of musicals in person, so this is all from like TV and like you know after the fact kind of things. Mm-hmm. So um, my number five, and I hope this counts as a musical. I think it does, but it is White Christmas. Oh. Musical movie. It's, yeah. it's, it's a musical it's movie. A, yes. And I love not only um, the actors and the songs in it, but I was very lucky enough. I have a dog in my face, <laughs> a very large 70 uh, pound dog. He also likes White Christmas. <laughs> yes. She, yeah. she is lovely. <laughs> okay. But um, I got to meet Rosemary Clooney. But a couple of years before she uh, passed away, and she um, came out to where I work. And I think that you, you, you can probably stay know where this. You work. I know, I always yeah. get around it. But um, so I work out at uh, Skywalker Ranch at Skywalker Sound. It's the uh, post production facility for our movies. And we also have a huge scoring stage there where we do a lot of classical scores and um, movie scores and things like that. And she has done, or had done, her, like I think the last three or four albums there. Oh, and wow. And I knew that she was coming because we, ha- you know, as an employee, I see the schedule and their names on the schedule, and and I'm like Rosemary Clooney, <laughs> <laughs> and I've it's actually the only time I have ever used my job to meet somebody, and so I called to the scoring stage and said, "Hey, this is Annalise. I understand that Rosemary Clooney is here today," and I get this, yes. And I said, well, I just so happened to bring, this is how old I am, my VHS tape of White Christmas. And would it be possible for me to come in and meet her 
And I know that's asking a lot because we don't do that. Like you, you know. Yeah, it's would, work. It's they're right, they're it's, doing their job. Yeah, it's just the unwritten rule of a facility to be professional, right. and that. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you're not allowed to fangirl out on Rosemary right. Clooney. That's just not allowed, you know? And so um, there, and there's this, like, chuckle on the other end of the phone. And she's like, of course, come on down. And I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. So I went in and I got to talk to her for, like, five minutes or so. And she was lovely and she was honored. And, and she was like, that is so cool. And she looked at my VHS tape and she's like, do you want me to sign that? I'm like, if you don't mind. And so she wrote it to me and um and then of course she did something super cute and like told me to have a wonderful white christmas in like san francisco because it doesn't snow here (laughs) but (laughs) anyway so it's not only a wonderful musical that i obviously had a copy of but i got to meet rosemary clooney in person so that just made it that much more special that's neat so all right (laughs) all right what's your number five uh my number five is fiddler on the roof Mm. Nice. Have Very you guys nice. seen the movie version? Uh, I have. I have. I've seen parts of it. I'd <laughs> so, li- be lying if I said I saw it all. That's okay. So I grew up Jewish and Dominic grew up Catholic. And so to ease him into the culture that he was married, <laughs> I was like, how do I like uh, teach him or share sort of my history with him? And so that was one of the first movies we watched together. And so it has special meaning for me because it was both, I know every song and love it so much. And my parents had seen it. My parents are in their 80s now and they had like seen the original Broadway production of it. Oh, so wow. I loved wow. anything that links us to things culturally in that way. And and now it's one of Dominic's all time favorites. And we just went to see the revival on Broadway and it was amazing. Amazing. That, it is, holds so, that is so awesome. Cool. And it's so cool that it brings you together. <laughs> Together, and even though it happens to be about that particular immigrant story, it's so universal. Right. It doesn't matter whether what everyone comes from someplace else, and everyone has a history. And it's uh, it's beautiful. It's totally beautiful. I, I awesome. am going to forego my explaining of why number four is number four because I quickly want to say last week we talked about. Chinese food on Christmas, and we didn't exactly know why that was a thing. And so one of our listeners um, tweeted back to me and said that it was actually rooted um, in in between the, the, the Jewish people and the solidarity with the Chinese people, because when Christmas came around, it was like, what, what do you do if you don't s- celebrate Christmas. And I didn't know that because we were saying like, how did right. that start? Right. And so right. it was a really neat, so she sent me this article. It was, uh, her name is Angela from Angela to be pecked on uh, Twitter. <laughs> um, and she has a blog. It's, okay. it's amazing. But I thought, I thought it was, yeah, it's the number two, the letter B pecked Angela to be pecked. Um, so you were saying about that and it was funny cause it, I'm like, I don't understand the whole. And so she sent this really cool article about how these, these were, uh, you know, the two, um, big cultures. Culture yeah. yeah. It was so, it was, it's the article's amazing. And I really appreciate her sending in it. But when you, when you were saying growing up like that, I'm like, Oh, cause everyone that I know that goes and has Chinese food, either on Christmas Eve or Christmas day is not Jewish. And right. none of the people that I know that are Jewish is that have ever said like, Oh, you know, they, I've never put it together. So it was really neat. So, uh, with <laughs> that, my number four was Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Not not tied in together. Not at all. But I do so believe Greece. Together, like, I get it. Yes. You see how you do that? <laughs> yeah, you like that? But I think yeah. Greece is where I got my love of automobiles. Because I was really, really young. Oh. Yeah, my cousins would play it all the time and we went to the movies and then and would sing all the songs and they would make me act out one part and they would take turns acting the olivia newton john part out which was really awkward um because he has two you have the leather jacket oh yeah well they put me in one of their leather jackets i was you know i was fairly young at that time and um so so but then the the cars it just made me fall in love with cars and to this day i still modify cars because of that freaking movie so greece (laughs) greece my number four so there we go. No, Chinese sorry. food, Jewish people, and Greece. How's that? Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. I'm trying to, I can't read my own writing. Hold on. Yeah. So I started out with a huge list. And as I say every week, I have to narrow it down to the five, which is really hard. Yeah. So um, my number four. Such a big favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 could, I could definitely get like a 20, top 20 out yeah. of this. But um, as Mary Poppins. Ah. And Do you know they're making a remake of yes. it with oh. Sam 
Miranda and Emily Blunt that's yes. going to be amazing. Yes. Really? Yes. I, I, I heard that That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty amazing. And I think that um, – and again, for me, it's one of those ones that I think means a lot because I think if something stays with you and you find yourself like in the morning while you're like making coffee, if you find yourself like singing that, but you haven't seen it or heard it in like 10 years, yeah, it's yeah. in there forever. It's ingrained. Yeah. It's deep. And it's obviously just like stuck in your heart somewhere because like you're, again, making coffee in the morning and you start singing the Spoonful of Sugar song just to yourself. And totally. so it's in there. That's great. <laughs> All right. Your number four? My number four is a Sondheim musical called Sunday in the Park with George. And the entire uh, the entire sort of centerpiece of this is to be a creative person. Make something. Make something. And make it beautiful. That's cool. So, That's cool. And all of the music is um, incredible. And that story... In the original production, Mandy Patinkin, now of Homeland fame, yeah. right. <laughs> and uh, Bernadette Peters, who was on um, – do you guys know that show Smash? Did you ever watch that TV show Smash? No. I don't, but I definitely know who Bernadette no, Peters yeah, is. No, who Bernadette Peters is, yeah. <laughs> um, they were in it together. Anyway, it was one of the most amazing things, and if you listen to the soundtrack – um, basically, the it's like children in art. Like that's what the world needs. If that's you have children cool. in art. And and it it leaves you incredibly hopeful. And what you give up for your creative pursuits that there's a lot you have to give up to have an artist's life. That's, that yeah, awesome. that's awesome. We need to go see more musicals. We do. <laughs> yeah. My that, that's going to be our takeaway from yeah. favorite five. Yeah. <laughs> my number three is Jesus Christ Superstar, mm-hmm. which my mom used to play the record of <laughs> at home all the time when I was much younger. And I just thought it, I didn't know what was being said. Cause I was just, as a little kid, I was like a little rocker anyway. It just, it just had like some kind of driving musical force. And then as I got older, I saw, I, I guess it was the movie of mm-hmm. it. And I just thought it was, it was great. And I'm not a particularly uh, religious person. I like to think of myself as spiritual, but I, there was just something about that and kind of the, the whole, Jesus Christ rock star thing that kind of grabbed me and I was I was way into it. I think that was one of the first. There was like Tommy the Who yeah, right. That rock anthem, sure. Hair, I think in the 70s was sort of the beginning of taking the Broadway form and making it rock and roll. Right. I see why you would love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Good choice. I like that. One. Bunch of long hair guys running around. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I don't know if you uh, heard Church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard the episode where uh, Neil talks about how instead of when he was in like junior high and high school, he didn't have uh, posters of girls on his wall. He had posters of like long haired All dudes in makeup. It all was all and Poison and Warrant <laughs> and Motley Crue and like, Rat. Me too. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> but no wonder my, my... <laughs> <Love> each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no wonder my dad was concerned. For... Right. <laughs> Although he would have been cool. He rolls with it. Yeah. Your dad's pretty cool. But it was just funny. It's like, he's like, you never had yeah. pictures of girls on your wall. I'm like, <sighs> Never you didn't thought have about that. Sarah Fawcett no, or 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 Baywatch or anything. I didn't have like you know it was a uh, Christy Brinkley, you know, or Paulina, <laughs> or uh, no, none of that. It was I did have one poster. Into their husbands, right, right, <laughs> Ex- exactly. Who was Paulina married to from the Rick corners? Rick Ocasek, Rick Ocasek, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're still married. Joel, yeah. Yep. Do you remember that Uptown Girl video? Oh, yep. of course, of course. That was like, oh my god, and they're married, and he's. A rocks. Oh, that was yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah, you felt like it felt like watching you guys. You felt like you were getting to see behind the behind, scenes. Yeah, <laughs> like this famous couple. They should do a podcast. They yeah. should. I wish. Well, I think Paulina and Rico Case could do a podcast because they're still together they're still and together. they're still happily married. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. But they used to live not far <laughs> from me in Brooklyn. Lola, come here. Come here, Lola. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I thought that Sorry. was our dog. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> oh no. Self in the mirror. Never. And she- Never He's need like, to apologize about puppies. There's been puppies some bone on. chewing over here in the yeah. corner for like the last half hour. And I keep like trying to like inch my foot over, like push her in the butt. I'm like, no, shh, yeah. shh. But it's not working it's for me, part so. of It's part of the podcast now. Mommy's on a pocket. All right. Well, we better move on. All right. Yeah, yes, yes, right. yes. Go ahead, dear. Um, so my number three is My Fair Lady. Mm. And again, one of those ones that I will sing to myself in the car. I have the soundtrack. You know, and then I'll, you know, just again find myself just singing it around. Just and and I'll also sing the um the dad's part, but like the night before he gets married, I'm getting married in the morning. 
the the drunk dad song. <laughs> and nope. you'll, so you do both parts. Yeah, I'll do both parts. I don't. I don't even need you. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much because I can't wait. Like in the next week, I'm going to play. Jesus Christ Superstar, My Fair Lady, Mary Poppins for my family. We're going to like completely <laughs> We're gonna reinvent. <laughs> and these are all these like cities. That's awesome. So, happy. <laughs> so what's your number three? Uh, my number three is uh, a chorus line. Okay. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Um, which, you know, is just the best. So I loved it. It's one of the first shows I saw with my mom. I bought a jacket. It was one of the only like swag things I was ever allowed to purchase. We would always get the album, but she let me buy a chorus line jacket and I have it in a closet here somewhere like under, um, like under plastic, like dry cleaning. Sure. Yeah. And Kelly Bishop, who, uh, is the mom. Can you guys hold on? Oh, of course. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. And then we'll like, just, Talk about we'll no, don't right don't worry about it. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I I imagine her jacket to be one of those black satin ones. Like I was thinking sheeny, the same the thing. I was ones. actually thinking that it might be gold. We'll have to ask her. And the the back is like bedazzled with the chorus. Oh line. yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know who would probably love that jacket? Her daughter. Yeah. She'd probably steal or it. anyone. <laughs> I would. Anyone who's born. I just meant like or lived the, through the you know, 80s. Like yeah, exactly. It's it's, it's cool again. <laughs> She's so sweet. This is why when like you know I was like, oh, are you sure you want to be on the show? It's awesome. <laughs> Yay for That's dogs! So great. I love it. And now our dogs are in here. Yeah, our dogs are going to start barking. Um, anyway, when you talked about like getting to meet Rosemary Clooney, so Kelly Bishop, who was in a chorus line, my first show, my mom's favorite show. I have the jacket. I I listened to that record so many times it basically like decomposes after time right. and then and then I got my first one of my first Broadway shows and Kelly Bishop who you guys know she was the mom on Gilmore Girls like mm-hmm. Lorelai's right. mom yeah yeah. Um, yeah but she played my mom in this play and I literally was like I'm sorry I need to just I know I'm going to be professional and I'm we're going to work together and it's all going to be fine but I just need five minutes of being a complete idiot around you and asking ridiculous questions and can I bring in my jacket to show you? But that was one of the biggest thrills for me when reality and fantasy collide like that. It's amazing. That's so cool. I love that. (laughs) She's the best. So my number two is Phantom of the Opera, of which I have seen many times. And I know, I know it's kind of like, a staple and you know, everyone's well, but not it's everyone. So but impactful, a lot of seen. Though. It's so I, it's one of the only ones I've seen as yeah. well in person to me. It always, for some reason it had like that, that darker vampirical, that's a word, uh, <laughs> feeling to it. Which you love reason. as well. Yeah. So. And so I just, I with the first time I saw it, I absolutely fell in love with it. And I think it falls into the rock opera category for me. Yeah. So it's got an edge to it. Yeah. That's for sure. But yeah, so, that's my number two. Love it. Nice. No. Yeah. Um, so my number two is going to throw you guys a little bit. I might, might not now that you've seen the rest of my list, but, um, it was almost number one. I actually moved it down to number two, but hands down, one of my favorites of all time. And again, another one that I own in person and love to rewatch is Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. (gasps) That's such a great one. She talks about that all uh, all the time, more often than I think she knows. Like Do we'll I really? be doing something, and she's like, "Have you ever seen See, or watched Seven Brides?" Right. And I'm like, "No, no." But but um, Dominic has seven sisters, so I used to always like want to get his family to kind of re- they could be the brides and then the brothers. <laughs> that is so cool. That would be so much fun. And I want to like recreate this musical and maybe like. I feel like Christmas pageant <laughs> like coming that. on. They're like, no. nope, <laughs> <laughs> no, but great. We'll watch it. Yeah, but right. we're yeah. Not. Oh, that's and, so cool. And okay. then, like again, it was one of those. I loved it since I was a young kid, and it like won the Oscar the 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 year the film came out. And Julie Newmar was one of her like first movies, and I got to meet Julie Newmar later at again a comic book convention, and I was like, you know, and everyone's like, oh, Catwoman. I'm like, oh no, no. Um, seven I'm brides sorry. for seven brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Take you back a little further. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and she was like, what? No way. And I was like, oh, no. Can we talk about that? <laughs> so. That leather hat costume away. Yeah, that, exactly. And, and there was the only pictures of but like. But not, not for too long. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> he does want to talk about that. But right. I yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Oh, that's awesome. See, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm sure it's on Netflix. I'm sure we can find that. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. <laughs> okay. All righty. Okay. okay. Number two right, for you. So, so uh, there's a show called Falsettos. It was just revived on Broadway starring um, Andrew Rannells, who's on Girls, the show Girls, who's mm-hmm. coming up on the podcast actually in a couple of weeks when mm-hmm. that premieres. That was one of the first musicals that told the story of uh, gay marriage and a gay. It, it starts out where a couple gets divorced because the husband falls in love with another man, mm-hmm. and it's that's a shattering thing that happens uh, on stage or off. Right. But at the end, um, it really gives meaning to a new idea of what family can be. And a family can be everyone being their true selves and loving each other. And the music is incredible. And um, and when it first happened, it kind of came out during the middle of the AIDS crisis. So it was incredibly intense and beautiful in another way. Mm-hmm. And when I just saw it recently, I thought, okay, so as we've grown as a society and as certain illnesses are being addressed more prolifically than they were in in the 80s, will it still resonate? And and basically just the amount of love and talent. These songs are incredible. And it was really the first time I'd ever seen anything like this on stage. And to be in an audience filled with gay people, seeing their lives reflected on stage yeah. and being in by the masses, it was really, really impactful and powerful. So that is a musical that I saw when it originally premiered and now seeing it again and seeing who I am now and sort of how I've grown since the first time I saw it was really remarkable. So that's a really special one. It's a teeny tiny musical. Wow. It's not like, it's not like Phantom with a huge orchestra. Right, right. Right. This is, it's this intimate, tiny story about these three people and a mother, a, a father and a son and what happens when the father meets this other person and, and how they all grow. And it's, beautiful oh, i want to see that i, I yeah, really want to see that i was that. just gonna say that sounds like com- but like completely opposite of like the, the couple of the ones i picked because it sounds so much more intimate and personal yeah that it probably right. in, a, in a way almost means more and is more impactful because there's yes but when you said less Mary, to be distracted by <laughs> my sisters are seven and eight years older than me and so obviously they would go off to school and for years i was not yet in school and the only thing that would like comfort me when the school bus came and took took them off to like first and second grade was my mom would put Mary Poppins on and I would Aww. lie on the carpet in the living room, like wiping <laughs> the ears, feed the birds or whatever. Those really sweet songs were so, right. you know, there's no, there's no replacement for kind of um, not just the music, but what it did for us. And when we heard it and right. it's it was a moment in time yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah. captures you. Yeah. That's so sweet. Oh. You just imagine sitting there listening to Mary Poppins. So sad. <laughs> right, and my mother would like throw an album. Yeah, listen to yeah, this. Listen to this. Oh, geez, really? You're still crying? Again? Come on. Yeah. Still- <laughs> uh, it's Groundhog Day. Yes, every day. They yeah. to Pull it together, lady. <laughs> uh, my <laughs> my number one. My number one is Les Miserables. And I, I yeah. knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Like I've and- seen it many times. In fact, I went to Fresno. <laughs> to go Fresno. see it, which was not productions of Les Mis. Yeah, it was, but I'm like, because in my in my head at the in time, small Northern California, you know, I, I saw it in San Francisco so many times, and then it was gone. And you and have it's to mix like it up. In, you can't watch the same one every time. It's in Fresno, and I, I didn't exactly know. I mean, I did theater in high school, but I didn't exactly know how like professional theater works. So I'm like, oh, they're doing the same show in Fresno. That's awesome. I'm going to go to Fresno and see. No, it was not. Necessary. I mean, it was lame as rub, but it was not the same cast and the same production. Right. But it was still. I enjoyed it. But that was my. I still love that soundtrack, and and I, I yeah. enjoyed the movie because Wolverine was in it, obviously. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just I, there was something about that. Again, I think it had a little edge. It's got that kind of rock feel to it. I used to love yeah. to play on guitar. It's Some of. Yeah. yeah. Some of, and also, that could happen to anyone. Like Neil, you could like, oh God, I need I need one piece of bread. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then suddenly you're arrested. I mean, if you think about our penal system in America, that exact story in that show, the brutal unfairness 
of what happens. This guy has like a starving, right? And yeah. he's yeah. grabbing a loaf of bread. And that starts the, um, the, the, the yeah, once you're in the system, yeah, 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 for sure. So it still, it resonates, even though it's this kind of huge, fantastic, beautifully rendered musical, but the, it, it's as intimate as the story I told before, right? Because at the center of it is this grotesque unfairness. Yeah, right? no, it's one of the, the reasons a, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to give money to people that are homeless because I'm like, I'm. That's that's two months away from me. You never know what's going to happen. You know, if there's an injury or something, and then and that's me. And and right. these these people yeah. just need warmth and a place to eat. So yeah, I mean, you're you're starving. You just want to feed your family. The and, and like that. Totally. Yeah, and then don't get me started on the injustice of the penal system, and then yeah. versus you know. <laughs> Yeah. Depends on we are over skin, in- skin <laughs> coloring and all of that. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, well, that's another show. Yeah, that's right. in, in that's our, America and worldwide right now. Yeah, really that's yeah. our yeah. our political spinoff podcast. Right? Yeah, right. right. And again, that's one of the reasons. Not only do we do the podcast, but we have really um, taken on this favorite five is because not only do we talk about stuff that we already know about each other, but every single favorite five. We learn something, something about each other. About each other. That's we how didn't it came know up. Before. Yeah. That's how we, and that's oh, why we keep it and love it because, like, literally every single time, like, there's always something on each other's list that we didn't know or hadn't dived into, really. Because, like, who talks about that stuff on a daily basis? You're talking about, I mean, not only are you a couple and you talk about personal things, but you're also talking about, like, the car payment and who's going to take the dog to the vet and things like that. So you don't get to sit down and like, we would never just sit down and be like, let's talk about musicals today. Right. And (laughs) and the neat thing is like, your favorite Broadway musical. I know. know, Right. And the neat thing is instead of doing 10 minutes to go to list 20 and then you got to pick five, go, I'll meet you back here in five minutes. (laughs) And instead of doing the the top five and doing a favorite, because the list can change, you know, tomorrow, like we do, you know, our five favorite Chinese dishes. Well, that's, these are our five favorites today tomorrow it could be something totally different so right. you can always revisit too which is anyway i'm right. sorry go on right. what's your number one anyway <laughs> so um again my number one is a super meaningful one to me again because it's something i used to watch over and over again with uh my family and my mother and my sisters and it is victor victoria oh <gasps> Julie Andrews. She is so amazing. I mean, like, you can go back to, like, things like Sound of Music and everything else she's been in. But for some reason, just her transformation and her just feminine badassness in this movie is so overpowering. And I know, again, it's a Broadway play, but I haven't seen that. I've only seen the movie. Mm -hmm. But just that has made me want to see the Broadway play, which I haven't had a chance to. But it's just amazing. Like, it knocks my socks off every time I watch it. Like I'm speechless. I don't talk through it and I'll get mad at you if you talk through it. <laughs> so that's I, impressive. I, if you don't talk through it, I know I'm a talker and I'll talk through stuff, but yeah. if I, so if I don't talk, <laughs> but it's amazing. So, all right. So you're number one. My number one is, uh, I'm not alone in this pick, but I do feel that Hamilton truly is one of the most remarkable things to happen, uh, to Broadway. Because yeah. it has been um, something that has sort of been a slightly elitist, not always, but there's something slightly elitist or uh, about it as a art form. And it has just, because he has taken rap and, mm-hmm. and uh, all of these other musical influences in his life, jazz, rock, rap, and traditional Broadway too, mm-hmm. and woven it into an idea of our history and made it so diverse in its casting. Obviously the cast doesn't look like what our real forefathers. Sure. Look like. Um, the, the politics of that and the heart of that and the, um, uh, the learning that happens along the way by accident, just about our history is yeah. it's extraordinary. And it's turning so many young people onto Broadway also. And it's just, now there's a mixtape where all of these other, you know, rap artists are doing it. And it's really, I just think it it is one of those things that's all that. Yeah. Like it actually is all that. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. It is all that. It's so, one it's one of those one of those pieces of art that takes it you know, it makes you look in a mirror and at the same time is an incredible piece of art and fun to listen to and fun to watch. But yeah. it, if you if you really if you really study it and really look at it, you're like, oh crap, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot we think we know that we don't know. 
Yeah. And it's and it's not only is that, but I'm going to make it, you know, for some people, I'm going to make you listen to it through a form of music that you've thought irrelevant because you don't understand for a long time. And I'm not pointing any fingers at any one kind of person, <laughs> just saying that that it 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 encompasses so much politically and emotionally and, you know, with our society and culture. I just, I haven't seen it. I've read a lot about it. It's, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It really is. Hi, I puppy. Feel like it. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it is coming to San Francisco, I believe. And I believe the tickets are already sold out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, we'll, I, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can find a way to hook you guys up. Oh, yes. be... Some Someday, eventually, okay. we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. So thank but, um, you. Uh, thank you so much for being on. Awesome. Thank you for having me uh, one more time if you want to let people know really quickly where they can find your your podcast or anything you'd like to let them know where to find your address yes. uh, whatever you want <laughs> phone number no no let them come <laughs> and the same way i met these guys you can uh we can all become friends on twitter if you go to ilana levine uh instagram and facebook are little known facts podcast but mostly you can go to itunes but if you just go to my website all the episodes are there more information about my guests it's much more in depth and it's little known facts podcast.com um subscribe and then we can email each other yeah. and thank you again you're you're freaking wonderful if you and your hubby <laughs> ever want to come back on uh, by all means, let us know. I, I, we, oh my I think god! Be a fun Are you time. kidding? Do you yeah. mean it? Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, really. Dude, it'll be a double, it'll oh, yeah. a double date. Yeah. A it'll double be a date. double date. <laughs> and if yeah. you guys are ever on the West Coast or or want to come hang out, you, honestly, you guys have a place to stay. Uh, again, you, you have to be okay with it. It's a dog house. The dogs run the house. So if you're okay with that, <laughs> all is good. We have a we have. <laughs> Extra room, you know what's so hilarious is I was like, oh, she wants to do video, and I actually looked down and I was like, I have dog hair all over my sweater. I don't know if she can see that on the podcast, yeah. on the video. Uh, I didn't change though, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> listen, I've been I've been at a march all day. I'm glad that this is um, uh, only visual, right? <laughs> <laughs> only for us. So, oh yeah, only yeah. for us. Yeah. So, thank you again, and uh, obviously, you can find us at darkangelsandprettyfreaks.com or dapfpod.com. Because mm-hmm. I decided to buy that today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy all the versions. All right. So, just remember, have the word and the hashtag right next to each other. Right. right. That's, that's a and tip. Then, and then we can all find you there. That's there an Alana go. Levine tip. Yeah. No space Let's between the word and the hashtag. That's right. <laughs> all right. right. Before my dog disrupts everything, yes. I'm going to say goodbye. All right. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Do you want-